1998, Super Mario, who had cemented his role in video game history thanks to both his mainline series of platformers and exotic spin-offs, started a new title dissimilar to anything he'd encountered before. Mario Party released for the Nintendo 64 and threw the franchise's cast into an array of themed environments arranged to resemble board games. Players are tasked with battling others by obtaining coins which allow for the purchasing of stars while competing in numerous minigames and inciting events which serve to sway results. The title was and still is adored by many thanks to its chaotic occurrences and unpredictable nature, and so naturally, it obtained a great many sequels. Two of these sequels released on the Nintendo 64 as well, and four proceeded to release on Nintendo's next generational console, the GameCube. During this period, numerous titles also released for handhelds and as arcade games, but the spotlight always remained on the series' console installments. The first seven Mario Party titles, while having their own identities thanks to varying gimmicks, styles, etc., all share a very similar format, as did Mario Party 8, which released for the Nintendo Wii, although taking advantage of the then-revolutionary console, the eighth installment relied heavily on a usage of motion controls. Despite this diminished reliance on buttons, Mario Party 8 still shared the same similarities that all of its previous releases did. The next game in the series, however, Mario Party 9, released for the Wii shortly after Hudson Soft, the developers responsible for the title's eight previous releases, shut down. Because of this, it was the first installment developed instead by ND Cube, a development company comprised largely of former Hudson Soft employees. Under this new group of developers, Mario Party 9 was gifted a formatting not entirely unique from its predecessors, but certainly different. The concept of Mario and his acquaintances traversing boards remains in this title, but said boards have been granted more linear paths. The most notable and disdained change in this title is that every player is forced to travel to exactly where their competitors do, as all characters are placed into a singular vehicle at a board's onset, and must remain there constantly at the side of their rivals. This new structure, despite the backlash that was evidently negative towards its addition, remained in Mario Party 10, which which was released on the Wii U. Its abolition did eventually occur, coinciding with the release of Super Mario Party for the Nintendo Switch, and while this title did reprise many of the structural elements present in Mario Party 8 and the releases that came before it, Super Mario Party was a lackluster release that contained a fairly small amount of content and left many players longing for something better. The 11th Mario Party installment obtained an update far after its original release, which allowed for online play, but at that point, many had exhausted their enjoyment enjoyment of the title. Shortly after this announcement, however, came a trailer for Mario Party Superstars, a new release that was to contain five boards recycled from the N64 Mario Party titles and dozens of updated minigames. The title released on October 29th, 2021, and despite the evident fact that it's primarily comprised of graphically updated renditions of now decades-old concepts, many fans of the series were and still are very jovial thanks to this title's reinstatement of Mario Party's original original constructs. By compiling a selection of boards from some of the series' most beloved games and an even larger selection of minigames from Mario Party's history, Mario Party Superstars has been able to not only attract current fans, but also recapture the attention of those who favor the classic structure of this franchise. Being a video game designed to represent a virtual board game, the most prominent aspect of any Mario Party installment is its collection of boards. While predecessors to Mario Party Superstars have usually contain at least six boards, and some have housed as many as eight, the aforementioned title only grants access to five, though it's not difficult to understand why. The boards that are present within this game are of stunning quality, appearing far more detailed than previous iterations. While some of the more complex boards and gimmicks present during the GameCube era were not included, the rehashed Nintendo 64 boards that appear in this game still house their own unique identities, and said identities are only strengthened by their increased details. The misnomer that is Yoshi's Tropical Island, which is actually comprised of numerous islands and therefore would better fit the description of an archipelago, at one point held the appearance of a blurry pixelated mess with few distinguishable details, but now conveys the welcoming sense of leisure which comes with an exotic getaway that it once struggled to showcase. This colorful board comes complete with two bargaining thwomps who, upon given coins, become magnanimous creatures and allow players passage to the 
spaces hidden behind them, as well as a cheap chomp which can relocate the star from one island to another. The game correctly lists this board as the easiest of the five present, as its simplistic design which demands little in terms of decision making allows for a quick yet exciting battle. Spaceland, which made its debut in Mario Party 2, is slightly more difficult to comprehend. Its layout, as is apparent, is far less linear, allowing for players to traverse the board in a number of different manners. Koopa Banks also appear in this board, which force players to pay their fair share of tax coins upon passing, but can also be strategically landed on in order to accumulate wealth quickly. The most notable features of this board, however, are its seemingly infinite number of speeding thwomps and the Bowser coin beam. The former gimmicks will chase players in the direction opposite of their movement, essentially forcing them to retrace their steps, and if the Sniffit Patrol is currently on duty, they'll be forced to retreat even further. The Bowser coin beam acts as is to be expected. A massive screen rests in Spaceland's center and displays a number. Every time said screen is walked over, that number decreases, and upon reaching zero, every player on a diagonal stretch that cuts through the board's center will be struck by the Bowser coin beam, causing them to lose all of their coins. Contrary to Yoshi's Tropical Island, Spaceland requires players to consider numerous pathways and hazards as they track down stars in numerous locations. Peach's Birthday Cake, which has been gifted a difficulty ranking of 3 out of 5 stars, provides a mix of Yoshi's Tropical Island's simplistic layout, Spaceland's required decision making, and the element of luck that has been overwhelmingly displayed in Mario Party since the franchise's beginnings. This appetizing board contains no split paths that are immediately evident, meaning that unless a player lands on an event space which allows them to bypass a particularly dangerous portion of the board, every character must follow the same path in order to obtain stars, which remain immobile atop the cake's uppermost layer. The dangerous portion of this board that I previously mentioned can be encountered shortly after passing a star. Upon reaching the cake's rightmost space, a Goomba will be encountered who forcibly enters players into a lottery. Whether this lottery is won or lost is largely out of a player's control. If the Goomba states that the player has lost, despite his disappointment, that player may proceed free of harm, but if they win, they're sent off to a structure of the board that takes the form of a bowl of pudding, comprised of red spaces and inhabited by Bowser, before escaping back to the cake. An aspect of this board that cannot be overlooked is the amount of event spaces present on its surface. One of these, as alluded to earlier, allows players to skip the Goomba's lottery, but the others, which are placed on the cake as pairs, allow players to purchase piranha plants, with smaller plants being capable of stealing coins from other players and the bigger plants, stars. Despite the lack of options that players are granted while playing on this board, Peach's birthday cake provides a surprisingly chaotic experience. The aptly named Woody Woods is certainly the most difficult board to play on. Taking place in a lush, Monty Mole inhabited wooded area, this vibrant board houses a fairly simple layout with a small number of deviating paths. Upon completing a singular turn, however, players will come to understand this board's defining gimmick. The Monty Moles that reside in these dense woods will flip the directional signs on the board every turn, thus changing the direction players must travel regardless of their intentions. Certain event spaces allow for these signs to be swapped as well, but players must remember that every time a turn is completed, the signs will rotate once more. To ease their worries is Woody, a smiling tree who, when confronted, will grant characters one of two bonuses, but his dastardly counterpart resides in the woods' deepest sector who can grant one of two punishments. A lot of what occurs at Woody Woods is out of players' control in, so it's in their best interest to simply examine their surroundings and make the most out of the direction they're forced to move. The final and most difficult board in Mario Party Superstars is Horror Land, another which originated from Mario Party 2. This board has many gimmicks, with most revolving around the fact that this board will swap from day to night and vice versa every two turns. Taking place on the outskirts of a haunted manor, many boos are naturally present, with a big boo appearing at night who's able to steal both coins and stars from all players at once. But these boos can only be encountered at night. Contrarily, the numerous womps littering the board's junctions can only be interacted with during the daytime, and will force players to pay them in order to be granted access to the paths they conceal. At night, these stone slabs remain static, unable to be passed by any means. If the current state of the board is disruptive for any reason, via numerous event spaces and fees, players can change the time of day on their own if desired. Doing so can not only grant advantages, but can also force other players into a disadvantage state depending on their location. These five boards all provide their own unique twists, which make obtaining stars and sabotaging friends an exhilarating experience. Within these boards are some miscellaneous topics I'd like to discuss as well, starting with the spaces. 
Of course, red spaces and blue spaces, which take away and grant three coins respectively, have returned, as have Bowser spaces, event spaces, and all of the others that are to be expected. But a space that has not seen the light of day since Mario Party 6 is the Chance Time space, which has been revitalized in Mario Party Superstars. This unsuspecting space, when landed on, marks the convocation of Chance Time, perhaps the most game-changing event in Mario Party's history, forcing characters to give away coins, trade coins, or even even swap stars. The return of this infuriatingly powerful event is something I am very grateful for. With this crazed addition also came the return of hidden blocks, which when discovered grant players coins or stars, and some of the unique items that had been forgotten since Mario Party 9, such as the skeleton key and plunder chest, the former of which can be used to unlock certain gates, and the latter to steal players items, including other plunder chests. The dueling glove is present in this game as well, meaning one-on-one -on -one duels make a return though they present far less risk than their outdated counterparts as only coins can be wagered. The last of these miscellaneous aspects I'd like to mention is Mario Party Superstar's soundtrack, which has obtained a much appreciated update in quality. While it's difficult to discern whether or not live instruments were utilized, the re-recorded renditions of various tracks present throughout Mario Party's history make this game's original soundtrack a very catchy one. The title also contains numerous original compositions, five of which being rearranged variants of the track that play during the five different boards, but set at faster tempos or made to sound more tense as they play during the last five turns of any given board. Whether an item lost to time, a space that desperately needed to return, or a newly arranged music track, all of these miscellaneous additions help make this homage to Mario Party's classic history the best it can be. Refocusing towards the more prominent aspect of Mario Party, second only to the boards are the minigames, of which this title has many. A distribution of a hundred minigames make an appearance that represent the series' history, as do five additional single-player item minigames. While it would prove redundant to recite specific details of each of these, it is worth noting that many of the minigames found in Mario Party Superstars are regarded as fan favorites, and it wouldn't be shocking if Nintendo took consumers' feedback into consideration when choosing which minigames to reprise. These minute battles are, of course, encountered while playing on boards, and players can even control which types of minigames will be played by choosing preset selections, which house minigames based on skill, luck, or even only those which appeared on specific consoles. The title also houses a mode dedicated solely to the playing of minigames, allowing players to participate with friends or even play against online opponents in an attempt to obtain longer and longer winning streaks. With minigames maintaining such a central role in Mario Party, the the series' latest installment, as it does with its boards, provides a flawless selection of them. As it stands, Mario Party Superstars is able to provide countless hours of fun both to players who wish to play on their own and those who compete against others, whether locally or via the game's online service. After nearly a decade of Mario Party titles being formatted in a manner displeasing to many fans, it's difficult to believe that this newest installment will fade out of attention very quickly. However, it would be nice to witness the title be given updates in order to aid in its continuity. Nintendo has a collection of dozens of pre-existing boards already accumulated thanks to previous titles, and with so many fans fans ecstatic over this title's return to form, consistently added downloadable content could allow Mario Party Superstars to thrive for years. Additional boards, minigames, characters, or even stickers to provide more ways to communicate with online players would all be appreciated, and with over 10 games worth of ideas at their disposal, Nintendo could make players of this game happily download additional content without having to conjure up new ideas but instead merely give old ones some cosmetic makeovers. Of course, even if the game remains as it is now, I and many others who have longed for a new Mario Party title to usurp the series' original format are simply grateful to have a game like Mario Party Superstars. Mario Party has an extensive history, spanning over two decades now, and while the series is largely praised, like many, it's had its ups and downs. Following a period of releases which were reformatted after Hudson Soft's Division, Mario Party Superstars took the form of a classic Mario Party title but upgraded in every sense, which was exactly what many had longed for. Containing five boards and over 100 minigames which were selected from previous installments and granted commendable graphical upgrades, as well as both remixes of nostalgic music tracks and a selection of original compositions, Mario Party Superstars could already be considered the release which revived Mario 
Mario Party to its former state of glory. But with boundless potential for downloadable content that could be released over the span of numerous years, this game by no means has to be in its completed state. Perhaps the personal bias is involved in this statement, but this new title seems to have the potential to become one of Nintendo's most successful ongoing releases, perhaps even nearing the success of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, though I doubt that game will ever be dethroned. Regardless, the game that's presented to players today, whether completed or not, has already pleased countless of those who are both new to the series and those who've been waiting for their next party with Mario & Co. Thank you all so much for watching.